happening family it's time to pray and i want to look again at psalm 34 on today as we continue talking about trust and looking at the significance of how trust helps the believer to draw that much closer to our god we've been arguing that trust is the complete and intense reliance on god that is inclusive of one's relationship with the father one's devotion to god's word and one's remembrance of the promises of god psalm 34 as we've looked at david's life out of psalm 37 and his reflections over all of what god has brought him through. Psalm 34 is another one of those reminders, another one of those tributes that describe how we ought to have an attitude of trust, an, a, a mentality that says, no matter what, I will trust the Lord. The first three verses we've looked at in our last installment on trust, and you remember in that text, just out of the NIV, the Bible says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear 
and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And out of that uh, study, we discovered that a mentality of trust, an attitude of trust is one that begins with a decision that says, I will always trust God, no matter what, whatever season I'm in, whatever situation I'm in, whatever issue I'm going through, I will make the decision to trust God. I will completely and intensely rely on my God and I will do so out of my relationship with him. I will do so out of devotion to his word. I will do so out of remembrance of the the promises of God. And so you make the decision, but that decision includes reflecting on your God. When you start thinking about all of what God has done and everything God has brought you through and you go over the resume of the move of God in your life, it moves you in such a way where you start magnifying who your God is and minimizing what you're going through. Did you catch that? When you magnify your God and minimize your issue, your soul will move in a way where whatever it is that may be challenging you will move will be moved because of how awesome your God is. And so watch what it does. You decide, you reflect, and then it moves to your emotion and the joy that you might have been missing, the exuberance that might have been missing, the pleasure that might have been missing comes to your spirit out of reflection. So you begin with the decision. It includes your reflection. It moves to the emotion. And then finally, you bring in some invitation. That's why what you do in our trust is attractive to other people. And why the psalmist says at the end, glorify the Lord. How? With me. Let us exalt his name together. And so we studied how in the attitude of trust, you make those four stops that allow you and I to continue to practice what it means to trust our God, despite what you're going through, despite what you're dealing with, despite what's going on. Now, in the next verse, verse number four, and I want to bring your attention there now, we get one more amazing picture of how trusting God works. And again, it grabs a hold of the emotional part of every one of us. It grabs a hold of that, that, that aspect of us that maybe sometimes we don't realize just how troubling it is and how detrimental it is to our practice of trust. But believe it or not, every one of us will wrestle with what fear can do to you. You will wrestle with how fear can move you away from faith. How fear, the emotional response to a perceived threat, whether real or imagined, can cause you to be backed up in such a way where you don't trust God cause the light isn't on. You don't trust God because it doesn't look right. You don't trust God because it doesn't feel like you anticipated feeling or you don't experience what you anticipated experiencing. And so your fear will stop you from doing what God would have you to do. And yet David says in the middle of what that emotion may do to you or even in spite of what that emotion may do to you, he says this, I sought the Lord and he answered me. Watch this. And he delivered me from all my fears. I want us to take a look at that real quickly. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. David, help us to, to appreciate it. Number one thing David does in this text is he helps us to appreciate the perception or rather the perspective of fear. You, you in, in opposed to it or in opposition to functioning from trust. If I'm functioning from a perspective of trust, watch what you're saying. I have complete and intense reliance on God that is inclusive of my relationship with the Father, my devotion to his word, and my, my remembrance of the promises of God. That's my perspective when I'm functioning from trust. But my perspective when I'm functioning from fear is that I don't move the way I typically move. I don't, I don't live the way I ought to live. You don't live a robust and powerful life. You don't live in a way that uh, allows you to know God is your God. And when God is on my side, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. When God is on my side, I face my Goliaths. When God is on my side, I deal with, I deal with death and tell it to back on up. When God is on my side, I'm not afraid of certain things. Now, nah, when you function from a perspective of fear, the phobia-like effect of fear 
can spiritually affect you as well. I hope you're hearing me. Let me let me let me try to let me try to explain it. Fear fear can work in such a way where 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 no matter how big you are or uh, how how powerful you may be, sometimes it's not how big the obstacle is in reality, it may be how big you made it in your mentality. Come back and hear this. Sometimes it's not how big the obstacle is in reality. It's how big you've made it in your mentality. For instance, there are some things that become monumental in your perspective and can cause you to be jammed up in a way that does not make any sense. There are some of you right this minute who are 80 to 90 to even a thousand times bigger than obstacles you face on a regular basis, but I've seen it with my own two eyes how grown adult individuals can be in a kitchen and something as small as a sugar ant can clear the whole kitchen because it decided to walk across the countertop. Y'all ain't hearing me. I've seen living rooms where adult human beings, grown adult human beings can be, can be cleared out because a fly decides to fly through the living room and occupy the space. Y'all still ain't hearing me. Some of y'all are though. I've seen spaces where individuals can literally be moved by that which they are a thousand to two thousand times bigger than. You're, you're not hearing me. Let me connect the dots. Sometimes it's not how big the obstacle is in reality. It may be how big you've made it in your mentality. And the problem with it is that what we end up doing is we can allow the mentality of fear to create such trepidation in our heart where we will allow the same power that ought to be given to us, given to the item and the thing that's smaller than us becomes bigger than us and moves in such a way where it dominates us. If you can, if you can see this with an insect in the illustration I just gave, for those of you the struggle with having problems with bugs, you can see that same power of fear working in your life in spiritual matters, working in your life in emotional matters, working in your life in sociodynamic matters, working in your life in our own mental well-being. Fear can cause us, not only out of the perspective of fear, can cause us to allow something the smaller in reality to become bigger in your mentality. But not only is the perspective of fear dangerous, the paralysis of fear is a reality. The paralysis of fear, when that perception of what you fear moves in your life, it can deny your progress, number one. It can dampen your Spirit, fear can cause your joy to be taken from you. It can darken your imagination. How many of us have not stepped into what we could step into because our fear has dampened or darkened our imagination and we cannot see ourselves being in the moment. We can't see ourselves realizing our dreams. We can't see ourselves hearing the voice of God saying, I made you fearfully and wonderfully made. I give you to be who you are. You are the head and not the tail. I've made you to be more than a conqueror. Your imagination cannot see yourself in that situation because fear has depleted you or fear has darkened you. Fear can deplete your joy. Have you ever allowed something that you are worried about or fearful of or anxious of or dealing with trepidation to get so bad that if you hear the name of an individual or you hear the or you read, uh, read the title of whatever it is you're fearing that it can literally increase your heart rate and cause you to be in an anxious moment at that moment. Fear has the ability to deplete your joy in the moment. It can distort your reality. It can cause you to speak in absolutes and that is not the nature of how our God works in this world. You cannot say that anybody has power over you when God is your God. You can never say that you are all alone when God is on your side. Can you hear God saying, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm more faithful 
to you, God would say in the scripture that a nursing mother is to her child. I will never move. Though the heavens and earth be removed, God's word will always stand. And when you know that that's the faithfulness of your God, you cannot allow fear to distort your reality. It can deny your progress. It can dampen your spirit. It can darken your imagination. It can deplete your joy. It can distort your reality. Fear can destroy your missional heart. Fear has the capacity of moving you in such a way where you can be brought off course and not doing what God would have you to do. But let me remind you of what God does. God is such an amazing God that every now and then he will allow you to come toe to toe with that which causes you tremendous fear and trepidation to remind you that I am with you and I can remove your fear of the thing that's gripping your heart. David, in this text, reminds us that God has the capacity sometimes of not removing the ant off the counter or the fly out of the living room, but the fear from your heart. God will allow the very thing that will move you and bother you and cause trepidation within you that will deny your progress and dampen your spirit and darken your imagination and deplete your joy and destroy your re or distort your reality and destroy your mission or heart. God has the capacity of, allow of allowing you to be right there in the midst of what may cause you trepidation and remove the fear that you have of it from you and so establish your trust in him. David, David, David. Remember, he's in Gath. He's in the presence of King Achish, the king over Gath. And what David reminds us of in the narrative, you go back and read it, is he changed his demeanor because fear had gripped his heart as a result of people speaking about him, talking about him, doing all of that. He changed his demeanor and he ended up being able to face a situation where he's inundated, surrounded, completely encompassed by something that would move him, distort him, deny his progress, cause him great fear, and he overcame it because God snatched the fear from him by changing the nature of who he was. I'm, I'm hoping you're seeing this. What God every now and then does is he will put you in a place where the very thing that you were bothered by, the very thing you were uh, 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 moved by, the very thing you were fearful of, he will put it in such a place where it will literally lose its effect, its power, its ability over you. Let me let me share something real quickly and I'm moving on. I want to show you this text. Long time ago, one of my daughters had this issue with bugs. I, I don't like bugs. Daddy, I can't stand bugs. She was afraid of bugs. Every time bugs would come into her room, she'd scream out, Daddy, 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 come in here. Please kill this bug, kill this bug, kill this bug. And lo and behold, God allowed her to go to summer camp. And when she went to summer camp, the camp, the tents were outside. And while she was outside, all of the bugs and all of the insects and everything else that she would normally call her daddy to come and kill were all out there with her. And by the time summer was over, this same little girl who had fear over these bugs now would see a bug and would just say, it's just a bug. Y'all missing me? <laughs> what God does every now and then is he doesn't remove the fly. He removes your fear of the fly. Watch what David did in the text. Listen to my testimony. Verse number four. I cried to the Lord. I cried to God in my distress. And he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. In the, in the NIV, I sought the Lord. And he answered me. He delivered me from all my 
fears. David, what are you telling us out of the good news? I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. David, what do you say? I'm saying David's speaking and he's best basically helping us to appreciate the nature of trust. When you, you can trust God and give God everything, especially when you know that by going to God through your prayers, notice how at the end of I will praise the Lord, I will bless the Lord, he puts right underneath it in verse number four, out of your praise ought to come your prayer to your God because when you can do that, that God changes your perspective and hear the lesson real quickly. It's not necessarily that God is going to remove the giants from your surrounding. He removes the effect of the giant out of your heart. He will move the fly, the power of the fly from you. He may not take the flies away. He may not take the insects away following the metaphor, but he will remove the power that they have over you when you and I can learn to trust him. Trust God. Trust him in such a way where you say like David that I have complete and intense reliance on God that is inclusive of my relationship with the Father, my devotion to his word, and my remembrance of who God is. Can we pray? Father, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. And we praise you for being our God. We thank you so much for the power that you've given us in being able to face the things that are going on around us. Lord God, we thank you so much for equipping us with the means of trusting you. The ability to know, Lord God, that even though we are in giant-like opposition and those giant-like oppositions have the capacity to create trepidation in our heart, you have the means of removing that trepidation even if we have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those giants. God, we pray that you bless us to have a spirit like David where you free us from our fears, free us from the things that move our hearts. Free us from the things that cause us anxiety. Free us from the things that cause us to be disturbed and can dis distort and deny your ability, our ability to trust you in the process. We want, Lord God, to answer our fear through faith. We want, Father God, to come to you through prayer knowing that we can trust you as our God. We love you, we honor you, we praise and we magnify you. We ask even right now that you bless us, Father, to honor the power of this text and to be a people who can continue to have complete and intense reliance on you that's based on our relationship with you, our devotion to your word, and our remembrances of the promises that you've given us, promises that tell us you will never leave us or forsake us, promises that tell us, Lord God, that there's nothing in this created world that has the power or the ability to ever separate us from your love, power that tells us, promises rather that tell us that you are always with us from earth to glory, promises that remind us, Lord God, that whatever we face, we will rise again because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has already faced the best this world could throw at it and conquered it. God, we ask that you strengthen, heal, and renew. Bless your people to live every moment just for you. And we will be careful to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. We love you. We thank you. We praise and we magnify you. And in the name of Jesus, we together say and we together pray. Amen and amen. David said, listen to my testimony. I cried to my God in distress and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Keep trusting in God and let him free you from the challenges that come your way. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. Oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, I have to come to receive, to Oh, 